So here we have an, a structural view of how the queuing theory sees a queue system. There are three components, identifiable components in the queue system, and there are two kinds of players. Very simplistic uh, view of all kinds of queue systems, whether it's electronic, physical, human, inanimate object queue systems, anything goes, right? So, so long as we try to apply queuing theory to a particular queue system phenomenon in real world, we have to identify three components and map them accordingly to the physical uh, queue systems and identify the two players. What are these? Uh, the three components are the queue boundary. The queue boundary is simply the line or um, maybe vis visible, maybe uh, invisible, that bounds the queue system so that when um, items or entities enter the queue system, we will be interested and uh, will actually try to count the number of entities inside the queue and the time spent of entities inside the queue. So we are interested in two uh, quantities in particular, the counting and the timing. So we can also write here. Um, interested in the counting and timing. Okay, so uh, a lot of times decisions are made from knowing the quantitative values. Okay, so for example, is it massive? Is it expensive? Is it cheap? Right, so these are quantity about prices, about sizes. And here in Q system, we are interested in the counting and the timing because they tell us uh, how the system will evolve or will behave and thereby requiring more resources, more logistics, more arrangement, more monitoring, more supervisory time, etc. etc. Right? So we're interested in these two uh, quantitative aspects of the queue. And of course we will explain more in a while, right? So we are just understanding the three components. First thing first is the boundary. And I mentioned that example this is this could be physical boundary, which is when, for example, you enter into a physical uh, queue with railings on the side, such as when you queue up at a movie theater to purchase tickets. Uh, sometimes it may be invisible, such as in a hospital, where in I would refer to more modern hospitals, there will be no physical queue or benches that you sit, where, where the, the position of yourself physically on the bench refers to your the order in which you are you are supposed to be uh, meeting the doctor for consultation so uh, in modern hospitals you go in you approach the registration you take a ticket and that number will be your queue number right so assuming that there is no servicing of priority patients with serious conditions and therefore jumping the queue and all that uh, then you will be the next patient uh, or the yeah the next patient to to consult the doctor after the person with the smaller number in front of you has been served you are not required to physically sit next to him or her right you can walk around and uh, in in uh, some hospitals they even sms message you that you are next please come back soon so that's very convenient however even when there is no such boundary there is a boundary why because all patients in that queue system, in this hospital system, that you don't have to physically queue up, will be queued up in the hospital's server memory, where somewhere in the vast array of memories uh, that the computer ser server has, uh, your number is being positioned after the previous patient's number. The following patient's number will be queued up after your number. So there is a queue, except it's not physical. Yeah, That's what I talk about. Uh, so, can we know whether a, a sort of a randomly walking person is patient on the queue or not? For example, you go to the hospital, you took your ticket, then you notice a lot of people uh, in the hospital. Uh, 
should you be assuming immediately that they are all people in front of you? Well, not necessarily, right? How do we know who are the people who are in the queue system, that means waiting to see the same doctor as you do, or not? Yeah, okay, so it's not necessarily people. Well, we do a litmus test. We see whether uh, each person holds a number or not, isn't it? Yeah, so if you hold a number belonging to the queue to consult that particular doctor, then yes, you are in the queue. If you don't hold a number, yeah, because you have finished consultation and you tear the number away, or you are just appreciating the garden in the hospital, then you are not in the queue system. Yeah, so queue boundary uh, sort of uh, delineates yeah, what is in the queue, what is not in the queue, so that we can count properly, we can time properly. So this is a very, uh, a very important uh, part of defining the system, much like our skin defines you know our the, the 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 layout of our cells so that it we are a a uh, well defined body rather than a gooey of liquid and all that so that's one uh q boundary then we have the q component inside the q now we loosely call the q system a q hey there's the q right uh can you stand in the q what we mean is can you join that q system right to be more technically right so to refer to Q component, we're talking about this part of the Q system. What is Q system? Everything inside the boundary, including the boundary. And uh, this part where we can see in this uh, uh, cartoon drawing that the, the, the icons are all lined up and waiting, right? This waiting part is the Q component of the Q system the Q component of the Q system, all right? So in our discussion uh, that follows, where it is clear that we will not be ambiguous, we'll just say the Q. So the Q part means this part, the Q component of the Q system. If our intent is to refer to the entire system, then we will just say the system because the whole topic is about Q, all right? And of course, uh, the third, component in the queue system is the set of servers okay so the queue part of the queue system and then the servers part the servicing part of the queue system which of course in this picture will refer to this side okay. the servers that the, the two uh, the two entities that participate in the uh, two sets of players three uh, components okay the two sets of players involve the customers and the servers okay so even though we call the the customers customer here it is more a technical term uh, even when the customers are inanimate objects okay like like raw materials on the conveyor belt in a uh, factory that they, they are in theory referred to as customer customers are arriving so so we just generically use the word customer as incoming entities to be processed to be to 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 meet with the other set of players will be the servers okay so the servers can be anything that uh, meet that is required to meet the customers for some time, for some non-zero time. Uh, so for example, in the case of a barber, people queue up, right? And the servers will be the barbers. So the barber shops, right? The barbers will be the, the servers. The people who need haircuts will be the customers and literally uh, here as well, customers. So they will queue up and they will then meet the server to receive the service. The service is a value added time spent with uh, between the server and the customer. So from our theoretical perspective, we don't really care what is happening there. All right? We are not studying the operations, the value adding process, the supply chain, etc. We are not doing that. We are interested in, the, as I mentioned, counting and timing. Counting and timing. And um, 
a lot of times we care only about how long the customer spend with the service. The customer spend time with the service and we are interested in the amount of time uh, spent between the two. So the customers in this queue part of the system, uh, the customers, we say that customers wait, customers are served, right? And we say that the servers are idle or the servers serve. Okay, so these are the words we associate with the two sets of players when we talk uh, more theoretically about queue systems. Uh, customers wait. Of course, in real life, we wait too. But this uh, wait is tied to customers. So when we ask, in your queue system A, what's the waiting time? Now, you don't go and calculate how long on average the servers are idling, for example. That means the servers are not performing anything because there are no customers. And we are interested in how long they are idling, right? In that case, when we say, how long is your queue waiting? I mean, although it's not quite proper and complete, but of course, wait is a word that is also associated with customers. And we don't say that the servers wait. Loosely, we might say the server is waiting for the next customer, right? But more strictly speaking, we do not use wait with servers. We say the servers are just idling. The servers are just idling, all right? So uh, be clear about the use of the words. Customers are to be served. Customers don't serve. The, the moment they serve, they are, it will be weird it, uh, that this theory is not assuming that. So only servers serve. Then we can talk about service time, right? Service times will be when those times that the servers are busy. Yeah. And um, likewise, they are busy serving customers. So the service time is also on the customers, but then we use the word service time on the servers. Okay. Um, next is that Let's just put this aside. Okay, so we're interested in the general counting and timing that happens inside the server and also before, uh, sorry, inside the queue system and also before the queue system. So what is going to happen is that we need a way to describe the incoming traffic. We can talk about the incoming traffic as lambda all right so lambda will be the incoming traffic often known as the rate or the average i'm going to put a bracket here rate of arrival so first thing first is it is the rate of arrival meaning it's always on a per hour per minute per time basis yeah it's how fast and furious the customers are coming into the boundary lambda is a it's a, it's a constant and if you think about actual scenario people or unless you're in a factory in a control environment uh, random occurrences of queue people don't join the atm at a constant rate like two people uh, join the queue every hour that's not true right that may happen momentarily for a few minutes or even a few seconds but that's not true in general so if this theory is so presumptive we it's not going to be very applicable for most parts of the time so that's why we need to be clear that lambda although it is definitely expected to be a constant throughout the theory and in our discussions it is a average up value the long-term average of the of the uh, the traffic incoming into the queue system so uh, it is so prevalent and understanding that usually literature textbooks articles that you even google online you will find that people will just say lambda equals to assume that lambda is 2.5 customers per hour that what that means is of course the understanding is average uh, customer arrival rate is 2.5 it does not mean that every moment every minute every second we maintain a strict 2.5 customers 
uh, or, or extrapolated 2.5 customers per hour rate. Clear? All right. So that's average rate of a 